It's a big mistake, it's not true. We have values too, we here in Rwanda, in Africa, we do, no question about it. Second, there are some of these problems we have had in our continent, in Rwanda. Those from the north who define or want to define values have been part and parcel of these problems we have been facing. Some of them have actually been the cause of the problems we face. But at the same time, like, like the genocide here that, that took place here in Rwanda, where one million people over were killed. Well, I remember if your memory serves you well too, I'm not inventing anything. The debate that went on at the UN, it was like, you know, these developed rich countries, those who define values, simply took it like, these are just Africans killing each other. These debates were in the open. But you think that is true? You think the divide that actually led to this genocide was just a creation of Rwandans, not the people from the north who actually divided this country? told people to think of themselves as belonging to one ethnic group and the other to think as belonging to one another ethnic group and therefore they should kill each other. Not only are they different, but they should kill each other. Would you believe that? Would you tell me that the two, 20 million people, this is documented by other people, not by me, who were killed in the Congo, were killed by other Congolese in the old days of King Leopold. And you think all that just disappeared in a moment, then you had the savages coming over and taking over their own countries and killing each other, and then the others assume the higher ground, they are up there in the north and keep pointing fingers at those of us and think we have no values and we just uh, are there to, you know, we don't respect freedoms, we don't respect human rights, we, sure, you think so? BBC, you think so? You take time, you broadcast and from morning to evening, you, you, this is literally just abusing people. You are abusing Rwandans, you are abusing Africans, you are values, values, values. What values do you know, my dear sister, on behalf of BBC? So, I want to assure you, there is nobody in the BBC or anywhere else they are about who would be holding values better than we do here in Rwanda. Except if we just want to cover up the mistakes of the same people who want to define these values for us. Or really tragic mistakes of things they have caused. So, when you are saying that, you may tell somebody else, people who don't have time to think or who don't have a history that, where they have struggled with these complications, yes, they will, but here, those of us who have faced what we did, who have gone through what we did, we take our responsibility. Of course, genocide could not have happened just on the hands of others who brought it to us. No. We, Rwandans, have a responsibility. We, we, 
have our share of the blame for it. But there are others who should take responsibility for that. So I, I just want to let you know that these issues of upholding values and so on, as far as I'm concerned, as I know, as far as the runners are concerned, we don't need any lessons from BBC or from anyone. I, I, I tell you this with firm conviction. So, democracy or people in prison you're talking about, there's nobody in Rwanda who is in a prison that should not be there because you have a justice system that is actually functional and is fair. Let me tell you something instead. Actually, there are people who are not in a prison who should be there. There are no people who are in a prison that shouldn't be there, but there are people who are not in a prison who actually should be there. And I'll explain to you if you want. I know, for example, I've been seeing uh, uh, journalists uh, writing all kinds of things. Take somebody, praise her or him, and make them uh, champions of all kinds of things. That's fine. I wish these people are making them champions of their own situations, if, that's, if they wanted them, but not of our situations. And i give you some details. And what I meant when I said what I said. Take an example who is always written about and people who have been here even during this Chogam and they were visiting, there's a, a woman called Ingabire, Victor whom BBC and others want to always sing about being the face of the opposition, of them. okay, fine. And this is one I was referring to. She's not in a prison now, but should actually have, should be in a prison now. She was in a prison, she committed a crime for which she was tried in the court of law. She was actually sentenced and imprisoned. The government, the president, under the prerogative of the mercy, president has that powers, actually this woman was released from prison before she served her full sentence. And it wasn't because she was not guilty or whatever. I'll tell you something else which shows double standards, which lead to these things you were asking. She was tried on the basis of evidence that was provided by European countries working with our own justice system you see, so it wasn't just done here. It was done between us and some European countries who provided evidence, corroborating with, with that with the evidence we had and us on the basis of which she was tried and sentenced, test and put in prison. Now, but some people decide to make that person an angel of freedom and democracy and something like that. Well, where does it come from? But she's out there, she's not in prison. But this I'm saying, she would actually be in prison if we hadn't just forgiven her. Okay, we forgive her to be out of prison so that you can pick her and pump her and praise her. Okay, that's fine. If that's, uh, if that serves, but I wish it was serving something good for the country. That's okay. Then you have uh, another person whom uh, the very people I was referring to picked, praised, 
made her a celebrity, uh, him, him a celebrity, you know, made the hero of, made him a savior of, but I, I don't know even what he saved. Now when he faces justice, there is evidence, irrefutable evidence, he was tried in the court of law publicly, nobody questions the facts on which the evidence is based. But then say, no, 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 you see this one is, you know, a critic of the president. No, you first answer these facts before you talk about your, your things that you want to use. And in fact, this person committed this crime with many others. There are about 21 people in the same case, all of them who pleaded guilty and are implicating this person, and this person was at one time their leader. These are people who were armed, waged violence against families of Rwandans. People were lost, lost their lives. There are victims there. And then there is the one, you know, this person, you know, it comes from America, from Europe, and that this person, and in fact, what is interesting, they come and say, this person, we are not saying he's innocent, but he should be released. And then we ask them, say, okay, if you think he should be released, how about these others who are co-accused with this person, who are also in prison? So for, in other words, they are saying, this person is special. We've made him special, so you should not question that. And then we say, okay, fine. How about the victims? The very people, families that lost their people on the hands of this person. They can't answer that, but they keep insisting. So anyway, I'm just, let me try to cut. It was a lot of questions. Um, trying to grapple with how to cut the answer short, but so the, the, the basis on which the these judgments are, are, are made is not necessarily right. It's not correct. Um, so I will let you make a decision at some point what to believe or what you should be making other people believe, but uh, I know by my answer in whatever way, maybe you're already framing a completely different story about what I said or giving it a frame in which I, I didn't put it, but that's okay. Let me quickly talk about the migration problem. With the UK. The migration problem arises out of so many things that have been happening even before we had anything to do with the UK migration issue. We have so many refugees here in Rwanda. Congolese refugees, Burundi refugees, many, in their tens of thousands. That is one. Number two, in 2018, we decided, at that time I was the chair of the African Union, that we help out on this case of Libya. Many Africans through Libya, by up to now, they are still caught up there. They've been brought from Libya over time, brought here, processed here. Some of them are still here. A thousand of them so far have been processed and taken abroad to Europe, to Canada, to United States. But we just saved a situation where thousands of young Africans were caught up in Libya 
They were trying to get to Europe. They were not getting there. They got stuck. They were imprisoned. They were in jail. Then they, they were even being slaves. There were people coming to buy them as slaves and take to some places. So we said, we offered something to the international community. We told them, look, instead of having these people suffering in Libya, can we have them in Rwanda? So that those countries that want to help out either to return them to where they came from or to take them to places that can accept them. The reminder, those who want to stay with us, we can even make them stay here. We have no problem. Those are three options. And that's how the UNHCR, UNHCR got involved, other international institutions got involved, and the process has been going on since, since 2018. Now, on this one, I mean, because I have seen with this UK uh, partnership, people tried to imply that there is a man involved. It's like we are just being paid to have these people. You may find out for yourself, investigate, if anybody gave us money about the Libyan case. There was no money. In fact, the, what, what happened was the, the international community helped to transport them, bring them here. We provided a place, and they also started supporting these people. And that's how it has been going. In fact, we, we had that situation. We had another case where we, Israel, I remember, was throwing out some migrants also who had gone there from Eritrea, Ethiopia, Sudan, who also helped on that. That is way before this case of... Uh, so what is happening today is no different from what was happening then. Now, and this question of money involved that people are talking about, Largely, it is money to look after these people who are being brought here because they are not accepted in the other side, on the other side. Now, so if we have a situation like this, first of all, it also builds on our position in terms of how we see the migration issue. While there might be a right of a person to flee and seek refuge in some place, it's not going to be anybody. Because in this one, there are two types of criminals, if I may say. There are actually people who have been f finding their way to whichever place that don't even deserve to be accepted by those places. It's not automatic. That when you say, I want to go to UK, I want to go to France, I want to go to Belgium, I want to go to Spain, that you must always be accepted. No, it depends on why you are going to that place. Are you somebody running away from persecution or from serious problems? Yeah, but this, this is a case here. People should be able to listen to that. But at the same time, it's up to that country to decide what they do in that case. There's nothing automatic about it. But in fact, some of the cases involve criminality. People simply either escape justice for committing different types of crime, and when they are going to whichever place, there is no automaticity about accepting them under migration laws. I think this must be accepted as a fact. Two, there is a criminality that involves slave trades, like they are trading them. These uh, people who 
there is a, a network of criminals that uh, actually do business with this. That is known, the, the, the criminal networks are known in Africa or in Europe. So if countries are trying to say, no, we have to have orderly migration, what's wrong with that? have no problem with that. And it doesn't matter where they are coming from, whether it is Europe or Asia or wherever. By the way, we also, not so long ago, accepted people from Afghanistan. We still have young people who are living here who came from Afghanistan. We received requests that people were looking for where to go because they were fleeing what happened in Afghanistan, and we accepted these people. These people are still here. They are attending school. They are living a normal life, normal in, in, in that limited sense. Normal situation should be that they live in their country, but here we try to do our best to, to give them a sense of security and normalcy, but which is not complete. These people are here. They are being helped by different organizations, philanthropies. Nobody is giving this country money to do that. Absolutely not. So I wanted to, in those long explanations of words, to assure you that this migration issue is um, something that people will have different views about that I have tried to explain to you where we come from in dealing with it the way we deal with it. So for us, are we committing any crime in accepting these people to come here? But if they don't come, we won't complain. It's not like we are dying to have people come to us in this month. It's just, it's just that we have tried to help out. So what else do you want me to say? Uh, at the end of the day, this Rwanda, where we have come from, maybe we know, maybe you know or you will know. We are happy with the progress we are making. We want more progress. <laughs> we are members of the Commonwealth. Today, we are the chair, and uh, we will try to work with other members of the Commonwealth and make the best use of this opportunity for the benefit of everyone. It is no offense we have committed about that, and we don't apologize for the progress we have made the challenges you have faced. And I hope it is also realized that uh, I have been looking around in this world. I know 